plan of action is we hike a little way up the mountain, we then go off the back of it, off piece, down to a refuge where we'll stay overnight, and then we'll hike up the mountain again in the morning. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I have to say I'm feeling really nervous. As ever in the mountains, the weather conditions can work for or against you. This week, unfortunately, luck is not on our side. In fact, the snow in the whole of Europe this season so far has been very slow in coming. We're here in Engelberg in Switzerland with four of our top British snowboarders in search of some powder and also going on a very long hike. The plan of action is we hike a little way up the mountain. We then go off the back of it, off piece, down to a refuge where we'll stay overnight and then we'll hike up the mountain again in the morning. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I have to say, I'm feeling really nervous. Do you feel what I can feel? Can you see what I can see? What can I expect then? Right. You can expect to hike up this really steep thing. Make sure you use your board to get up there because mm -hmm. you don't you don't want to be falling down that. Get up to the top of that. Then we've got to go down this. Uh, it's the it's the cold side of the mountain, so yeah. it might be a little bit icy. The risk of avalanche is there is a risk there, but it's not really really big. James, you've been around on the snowboard circuit for quite some time, and I know that in that time you've done a fair bit of hiking. What's the attraction for hiking for you? Why do you, why do you bother? Why not just catch a chairlift like myself? Um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of satisfaction out of uh, hiking up a mountain and then getting great snow coming down. It's, um, it's a bit, I guess, like surfing, you know. You have to work for your rewards, which, I don't know, just makes it that little bit more satisfying. But there's a lot of risks, obviously, if you're going to go backcountry. Yeah. Of course, there's, I mean, there's always dangers when you're snowboarding. If you're on the piste or if you're off the piste, there's always risk of avalanches. I mean, it's never safe. Obviously, there's a, a lot more risk if you go if you're snowboarding off piste. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, I just can't get a grip. How did you do it? It's not absolutely ideal conditions, really. Um, there's more sort of ice than there is powder. But saying that, it's still wicked to be outside in the blazing sunshine with an amazing view. Snowboarding over the last few years, as we both know, has got a lot more popular, a lot more mainstream. Yeah. And because snowboarding is quite an easy sport to pick up, there are going to be a lot of people who are 
saying, well, I can snowboard, I can yeah. go back country. I mean, when I first started, uh, I was exactly the same. I'd just hike off anywhere. What kind of precautions can you take to minimise risks? Thinking about the snow conditions um, and obviously talking to local people is the first thing you should do. You should never really just hike off into the wilderness without checking what the, the risks are. If you were real hardcore, you'd, uh, you'd strap yourself on, mate. You've got this, these cliffs here. That was a long hike. I'll tell you what, it's all worth it, though. It's so beautiful. Just us on the top of a mountain. Wicked, though. <laughs> When you're going down, when you're looking down after a hike or, you know, just somewhere new, what do you actually look for? Yeah, on the way up, you're going to be checking out landings. Because when you're riding down, you can look down and the piece will gradually rise down, usually. And you won't be able to see what's on the other side, so when you're walking up, you're just checking out to see if there is anything. And you can check out lines as you're going down, but it's just the landings, you know. If you see something, you might want to go off it, and you can't check them out after. As I've got older, I know my limits. I can look at something and evaluate it and say, yeah, I can do that, or no, I'm not going to do that. Snowboarding isn't just a lovely, fluffy sport that you can just do every day. Sometimes I'm guilty of it myself, just losing myself, and I'll actually go too fast and, you know, get away with it. And then suddenly you think, right, I've got to slow down here, otherwise I'm going to kill myself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Don't side slip. OK, whoa! Traverse a bit. Try and get a turn in. I'm going to try. It's not... Oh! Ah! Help! Turning is not easy. It is. It isn't. Well, just pretend for a minute that it is. Sorry? Just pretend for a minute that it is and you'll do it. I can't turn, Phil. Oh! oh. No! Ah! It's so steep. Lynn, do you want the good news or the bad news? <laughs> the good news. The good news. The good news is we're still alive. I know. I can't actually. I'm sort of sitting here contemplating the day and I can't actually believe that I did what I did. Going down a piste and connecting turns and stuff is one thing. Off piste, like it was today, it was so icy. You don't encounter that in normal everyday snowboarding? No, no. It's I something, mean, something ice different. like you wouldn't believe. And, you know, I fell a couple of times, but here I am in one piece. Well done. <laughs> Are you looking forward to it? No, nah, yeah, I hate I hate walking. You're not into hiking. No, are not you? at all. I hate it. You know, you can talk about oh, it's so beautiful, it's all so but quiet. It is, you though, can forget that, mate. It? I'm no, not interested. But it is. I mean, you know, it's hard work, but actually, you know, walking in the mountains is you're is, welcome to is, it. Is a different is a different feeling. Mm. Talk and laugh with you as a dance. I wanna see a smiling face before the new day begins. You'll never know what it means to see the sunlight in your hair and dancing everywhere. I wanna shout about it. But I keep quiet about it Wanna laugh about it But I don't joke about it Wanna live without it Well, I won't do without it I'm someone's daughter I am somebody's son Can I use your mind Till the morning comes I'm no one's daughter I belong to the sun Keep looking 
I like the bit after you've hiked where you come down, you know, and it's snow that you wouldn't get anywhere else. I don't know how true it is, but they say Eskimos have like 200 different words for snow, and we did about 30 of them today, I reckon. overnight and um, you know the view outside is amazing you get to a point when you're up here for like a week a couple of weeks when you just have to get out you've got to go to the city yeah you, you really have to go out you stay all the time here seven days in the week every day out in the mountain and that's real beautiful but uh, you don't see the mountain you go a few days away from Ingleburg and if you come back then you say Whoa, <laughs> gosh, this mountain, that's unbelievable. I, I need the mountain, the, the nature for to live, yeah. Mm. I, I can't live in a city. You couldn't? No, absolutely not. When the fire cracks up, then it gets warm, and it takes the top off before it be cold. Oh, you see, oh, professionals, no. Ask the amateurs. If you suffer from the cold, then. Yeah, I hate it. Well, that's why I chose snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> we have got three, three bottles of red wine. Oh, mate. Wrong move. Why? Because I don't drink, I don't drink red wine. Mm. No, I'm fussy as hell. Don't like being cold. Don't like being tired. Don't like being hungry. We had a bit of a warm up today, and that we had a hike, and we, we came down the mountain. Take us through what we're going to be doing tomorrow, because it's a two-hour hike, isn't it? Uh, tomorrow you go up to Furenalp, and from there you walk up to the white we call Weisberg White Mountain, 
About two hours, yeah. And you will be back between five minutes and one hour. Depends how it's snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a cable calm there. <laughs> you see, I'm moaning again. I can't, I can't help it. So a lot of it for you is just hiking or somewhere where you haven't been before or where someone's told you to go. Uh, it depends. You know, I'll do little hikes off to places I know that I'll go pretty regularly when it snows. Then again, if I go somewhere that I haven't been before and meet up with people and then perhaps take me off on a hike, you know. I mean, most of the good powder is only accessible through hiking. And uh, that, that's why the powder stays good, because people can't be bothered to hike off. So if you make that little bit extra effort, you can sort of, you know, reap the rewards. Can you see what I can see? Yesterday was scary, but I did it. The videos make it look all so easy, and it's like, oh, yeah, we'll just jump off this clip here and do some kind of mad spin and land it and float off into the sunset. But it's, n it's not really like that in reality. I've been listening to, you know, the boarders kind of, you know, planning their runs and, and where they're going to go and stuff. And it's like you just, you do, you just realise that, yeah, it's one thing, as we said, you know, doing a couple of weeks, but it is serious business. It really is. It's not absolutely ideal conditions, really. Um, there's more sort of ice than there is powder. You just talk to someone like James. You know, he goes off some of the biggest cliffs. James and Stuart, all those guys go off some really big drops. But I've gone out riding with them. They don't go off every single drop, drop, drop. in situations like that. If you start getting scared, then things will start going wrong. I guess it's excitement and fear at the same time. You're concentrating, you're focusing on what you're going to do, and you know, it's just adrenaline, really. When you stand at the top, basically close your eyes and go through the jump in your head and then just do it. When you're in the air, if you're off balance, the arms start going, everything starts going, you just try and land best you can. If you're off balance, you're off balance. It's so fast. It's it's more feeling than thinking that that's why it's so exhilarating, that's why it's so much fun.
Whenever you do something like this, at the time you're like, oh my God, why am, I, why am I doing this? Why am I trying to sleep in minus 10? What's the point? But then when you look, at, look back at it, you, you do have a laugh and you are in the most amazing place. And when I go back to town and I look down on my motorway outside my bedroom window, I'll be like, damn, I want to go back and stay in that wooden hut. 